Hello, in this example, we are going to look at a analog to digital conversion and digital back to analog conversion going through a binary process. Okay, so uh, this is generally a common example that you will find in past years. Almost every year they'll ask at least in one of the variants. So keep an eye out for questions like this. In this one, it tells you that the variation with time t of the output voltage produced by a microphone is shown in this graph. So you see, this is the output voltage, beautiful, melodious sound of an opera singer, maybe. So here, you will notice that the x-axis is the time axis, okay? And it is recorded in millisecond. And the y-axis is numbers from 0 to 16. So the first thing you notice about this signal is that it is analog. How do you know it's analog? Number one, it's a continuous graph, okay? Uh, that varies in time with the sound of that is being captured by the microphone. The second thing I would notice is that the numbers goes from 0 to 16. Okay, this tells me that this is a 4-bit conversion. All right, so 16 here is equivalent to 2 to the power of 4. So this 2 to the power of 4 gives me an information and say that this one here is a 4 bit conversion. So a 4-bit conversion is a very, very bad conversion rate, but it's the kind that we can deal with right now with a normal calculator and draw within the reasonable time frame in the exam. Lah. Okay, so whenever we do from 0 to 16, it's 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So this is what we call the bit rate. So I'll write here, the bit rate is equal to 4-bit conversion. All right. So right now, let's continue the question. In figure 11.2, underline the most significant bit, most significant bit of the sample shown. Okay, so most significant bit, right, is the first digit or the most left digit in your binary number. You may be thinking, why is this the most significant? This is the most significant bit, right? I'm just going to label this MSB. This is most significant because it tells you that it's 4-bit. When it is 4-bit, right, if it's 0, you will still write 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so the top line here will be binary. Okay, the bottom here, I will write decimal. So in decimal or base 10, 0, this is 0, 0, 0, 0. So the first one, the most significant bit, tells you that this is a 4-bit conversion. And you may be thinking, is there something called a least significant bit? Well, yes, there is. Other past year question will ask you to label the LSB. So sad, but a bit is a number inside this uh, binary digit. Okay, so right now, I'm going to rub off the zero and continue the question. Okay, so again, the biggest one, the most left one, it's a 4-bit convert. shows you that it's a 4-bit conversion. So this is most significant. Least significant is the first one or the rightmost digit. Okay, complete 11.2 for the next five sample. Let us examine the first sample first. This 0, 1, 1, 0. I know this is binary because again, four digit is four bit and it's two to the power of six, to the power of four here. So these are all information to tell you that this is binary, not 110 in decimal. So how to convert this to decimal? The decimal. I mean, I know this is six, but how do I know that it's six there? Because you see, we sample here and this number is six. But let us convert or learn to press the calculator again. So you can always prop out your calculator here. I'm going to move my calculator a bit to the side without moving the wrong thing. Okay. So to press the 0, 1, 1, 0, you first go to mode. You see the base N here? Nah, 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 nah. You press 4. I want base N. Calculator saying, do you want decimal? You tell your calculator, no, bro. I want to input a binary. 
So press the BI. You see this BIN, tiny BIN here in green? You must make sure you're in the correct mode. If you're in the general mode, so generally when you open your calculator, if you don't know, you are in the computational mode. Like 12 plus 6 is 18. This is computational, what you're used to. But in binary, right, currently now we are using all these green digits, uh, green fonts. Okay, so basically you tell the calculator, hi, I want binary, please. And then 0, 1, 1, 0. So key in, 0, 1, 1, 0. This is not good enough. Must press equal so that you input the data. Calculator is like noted 0110. What do you want to convert it to? I would like to convert it to decimal. So press on the DEC and you get 6. All right. Okay. So now we're going to repeat the process again. Okay. For different, different time intervals because it has a certain sampling rate. But what is the sampling rate? Uh, you are given in the question here that the sampling rate, the conversion is done at a sampling rate of uh, 4 kilohertz. Okay, so we can find the period of the sampling rate, meaning how, what is the interval of sampling? So 4 kilohertz means one sec, one second I sample 4,000 times. So to know the period or the interval between sampling, I will take 1 over 4 times 10 to the power of 3 which is 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4, which happens to be 0 0.25 millisecond, milli being 10 to the power of negative 3. So basically what we are sampling is every 0 0.25 millisecond. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the original graph and begin sampling. So I sample at t equal to 0. My sampling here to here is 0 0.25. So I will sample again. I will sample every 0 0.25. So at 0 0.25, my decimal reading is 10. Okay, so this is 10. I guess if it helps, I will write the time t. So time here is 0. Time here is 0 0.25 millisecond. I guess I'll just write millisecond. Time in millisecond. I'm going to repeat again for 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1.00, 1.25. Keep sampling. 0 0.50 is 14. 0 0.75 is 15. 14, 15, 10. Okay, and... 1. 1 is 10.4. We always round down to the nearest integer. So 10.4, we will write this as 10. Even if it's 10.6, you write 10. 10.8, you write 10. Miss, when can write 11? 11.0, 11 you write 11. All right. So always round down to the nearest integer. And finally, 1.25 is here. It looks like 9. So 14, 15, 10, 9. 14, 15, 10, 9. Okay, right, time to press calculator again. Let me move our calculator a bit to the side. So right now, just now we change binary to decimal. Oh, calculator is covering me. Can I put it? Now we're gonna change decimal back to binary. So you have to tell the calculator, hello calculator. Uh, now I want you, I want you to take 10 as a decimal number. Thankfully, this one is already DC. Miss, if it's not DC, then hi. Yeah, okay, I go back to the original. We go back to the original mode. Okay, so you turn on your calculator, your calculator look like this. You press mode, press 4. Immediately you will see decimal. Because decimal is the common one that is always being used. Currently, the first reading is 10. You want to change 10 to binary. You just put 10 and press equal. No? Calculator is like noted decimal number as 10. Change it to binary, please. So you press BIN. You get 1010. You can go by total. 1010. Okay. Repeat the process again. So go to DEC. Ding. Second number is 14. 
So key in 14, press equal, click bin 1110. We're going to keep doing this, guys. Decimal 15 equal, change to binary 1111. Okay. So again, decimal 10. Hey, we have 10 already. Copy back 1010. So we're going to deal with 9. 9. Press equal. Make sure you see DEC 9. Then press BIN. 1001. So I'd rather use the calculator. If you know any other methods to convert, feel free. Go ahead. Just make sure we don't take too much time. Because this thing is only 2 marks. Okay. 1 error minus 1. 2 error 0 already. All right. So now I'm going to draw out how this looks like. Because if you remember your block diagram, right? Um, currently, we went from analog. So whatever that is happening right here, this process uh, is analog to digital conversion. ADC is happening here. I sample it at regular intervals. Sample, 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 sample. I take all these six readings. I change it to ones and zeros. So right now, I sample sample to get the decimal reading which is in millivolt okay analog signal and then convert it to binary so now all this binary number what do we do uh? we send it along the transmission line sometimes parallel to serial sometimes not needed go watch the previous video okay but now you are receiving already so imagine now you have all this data and you want to build back the sound wave you want to listen to the beautiful opera singer that you recorded so we are going to reconstruct this sound wave. And normally for past year question, this graph grid will look empty. It won't look like this. But for practices, for today, I will maintain the original signal form so that you understand what is happening. Okay. So we are still sampling at the same interval. So very quickly, I will write out the numbers. We have 6. And then this is 10. Then this is 14, 15, okay. Remember this one, we round it down. So we're going to take, I'm just going to remind you it's 10 and here is 9. So when we rebuild this, this is a digital signal. A digital signal is a series of highs and lows. We can only have integer values. So at t equal to 0, you sample, you get 6. And you're going to stay at 6. Let me increase the thickness. And we're going to stay at 6 all the way until the next sampling, which is at 0 0.25 millisecond. Then your reading will go up to 10. And we will stay at 10 until the next sampling, which is at 0 0.5 millisecond. That means we will go up to 14. Okay, we'll go up to 14. And we will stay at 14 until the next sampling that will allow us to go up to 15. Stay at 15 until 1 millisecond. It means that the output will go down to 10 and finally go down to 9. I tend to stop where they stop the graph, lah, so I don't continue after this. But if you want to, you can actually continue all the way because technically now no data, so we will stay at 9. No? So right now, uh, some people will feel comfortable if they complete the staircase. So it looks a bit like a histogram, but not really. Okay, and I think I'll stop here. So this is the output. So here's a question. Does the blue graph look like the black graph? Does it register all the beautiful changes in frequency of the opera signal? You see this beautiful little hum here? Where got? You see this beautiful hum here? Also don't have. So you will hear a very robotic sound. So this is no good. No. Your opera singer become robot. Hi, I know COVID-19, we cannot go concert, but this is sad. So you might be thinking, how can we make this better? And you will remember, if you watched the previous video, we could increase the sampling rate. Meaning, I uh, miss you take more reading. Law. Don't so kiam siap. Don't only take every two big blocks. Maybe we can take for every one cm. Left. I hear you. See? So now let's say we convert with a sampling rate, conversion assembly of 8 kilohertz. And then just a reminder, this one happens at the digital to analog converter, okay? This is what happens at the DAC. 
All right, so now we're going to sample and the process is pretty similar. So I don't think I want to write the numbers anymore. So at t equals zero, we will take six, 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 six all the way until we reach here, we will go to 10. But you see the problem of sampling here is that when you sample at 0 0.25 again, because I double the sampling frequency from 4 to 8, is that it is still 10. So it's going to be 10 from here to here. And then when you reach 0 0.25, as I change color so you can see clearly, this one is still 10, eh? I, uh, like that. It is as if it is 10 all the way. So it's a bit sad, but what to do? So we're going to continue our journey of sampling. So we're going to continue sampling here. This is 11, so we can stay at 11 before we go up to 14. And then this value here is still less than 15. So we are going to stay at 14 until we encounter 15. 15 is here. We will go up to 15. And then once we reach here, you look at this. This one is more than 13. So it will travel down to 13. Two and a half boxes. You should draw more accurate than me with a ruler, lah, my friends. Okay. So again, sample again. No? This one, we round it to 10. Round down. Sample again. This one looks like can be 11 because it's 11 point something. Okay, I'll mark out the samples later. And then this one will go down to 9. Is this more like the black wave, although kind of not really too? But you see, we managed to locate this this little dip and rise, né? got the dip and rise here. But here, here need, uh, yeah, this one still need, we need to <laughs> increase the frequency some more, but I don't think you want to draw any more histograms now. So that's the idea. We increase the sampling frequency, we get a better wave shape. Just compare the purple and the blue one. It's pretty obvious that the purple one looks more like the wave than the blue one. Okay, so later on, sometimes they will ask you questions like this part here. In part C, Explain whether the sampling frequency is adequate to enable all the beautiful detail to be reproduced. It's just no. no. But why? You could say that there are significant changes. There are certain changes in the signal. In details of V between samplings that are not included. And this shows that the sampling frequency is too low. Not good enough. Try again. All right. So this 14 this 4 kilohertz is too slow. 8 kilohertz is better, but there's certain detail here that is not detected. Just like this part here. This whole, de basically this one didn't detect any detail. Lah. So right now I'm going to jump quickly to a simulation to show you how we can improve our signal quality. Okay, so here is a simulation, right? You can see this one is a 2-bit conversion lah, and the digital output file is very low. The, this looks nothing like the red graph, okay? So you could say, okay, miss, let's increase the sampling rate to 10. You can see this kind of looks like, this part still looks like it's going down, but what on earth is happening here? Okay, let's increase to 15. Uh, so if we increase it to 50, it kind of shows the dip and rise, but we also have a problem here whereby this 2-bit is just not good. Lah, right? You can see that the staircase height, is the change is very severe. Because 2-bit is 2 to the power of 2, you can only have 4 steps. So we should increase it to 8-bit. Ah. So when you see, when we increase it to 8-bit, this staircase actually kind of looks like the red curve, you know. It kind of looks like it, right? But the problem here is that now your digital output data is, you have a lot of files. Lah. So how can we increase your signal quality? 
Number one, we will increase the sampling rate because if I change this to 5 hertz, this is 5 hertz, you will see that we can show the dip and rise, but this is not very good. If I change it to 10 hertz, the staircase become narrower. I can register all the granular changes. I can get better pitch. Okay. If I change it to 50, this is the best. If the bit rate is not high enough, the changes are also not so nice. So we want high bit rate, high sampling frequency. Right. So finally, we want to increase the signal quality. We can increase the sampling frequency. Please also explain how sampling, increasing sampling frequency affects your signal. All right. So it decreases the step width or step depth. If you are a bit confused, I've included in your notes an example of increasing sampling frequency. So you can see from the left to right, I'm increasing the sampling frequency and the step depth is this one. This depth is getting smaller. Now zoom in for you to see. So compare this depth to this depth and to the other one, this one, which is tiny because I increased my sampling rate from, Z, from 5 to 10 to 50. Okay, so I'll zoom out again so you can look at this. This is the effect of increasing the sampling frequency. This is more true to the original wave. This is less. Okay. Second option is to increase the number of bit rate to decrease step height. Where is step height? Height of the stairs? Well, like this one. So if you look at this picture here, this is 2 bit. Ayo. You see the step height is so high. Tall people also will fall down. Okay. So this is because, right, 2 bit means 2 to the power of 2. So we have only 4 steps. 1, 2, 3, 0, 4. 4 steps. Hiya. we got enough. Whereas here, this is 4 bit conversion. 4 bit is the one that is often asked in your syllabus. So you look at the digital output file, very similar, right? 1s and zeros. But I sample 50 hertz. Ah, so you get the whole fullness. But this is not as good as well. It's just that you can see this height is less. The step height. Increasing the bit rate will decrease this step height. Okay. And if I increase some more, I need to change highlighter thickness now. To 8 bit. Because when you have 4 bit, this means 2 to the power of 4, 16 steps. Within the same curve, they got 16 steps. Okay. And finally, for 8-bit, this is 2 to the power of 8, which is 256 step. So just by increasing the bit rate, we went from 4 steps, this one, to 16, to 256. And if you are wondering why all your computer storage is 2 to the power of something, it's for the exact same reason, because of binary numbers. All right. So to recap, decrease step width by increasing sampling frequency. Decrease step height, shorter, by increasing the number of bit rate. And maybe now, for some of you, listening to this will help. We are now going to listen to a track, but in four different kinds of settings. So the original track is up here on the green. So let's start off with how the original track would sound like. Okay, now we are going to listen to all the other ones. Let's start with the original and cycle through the rest. Can't hear anything. What is this? What is this noise? Uh, for reference, let's go back to the original. Gonna, 
So that's how different all these things sound like and you can see that their sizes are different depending on how much data about the audio that they have. So in actually, uh, if you look at any of these tracks and if you zoom into it, can we zoom in even more? Yeah, let's go, let's go. Okay, zoom in. You will see all the lines that make up the waveform which makes up what you hear. But if you zoom in even more, then you start to see dots. Why is it dots? Because this is digital music. It's not um, in real life where it's a continuous spectrum. It's discrete, quantized. And if you can com compare the original, the green color, with the uh, terrible sounding one, which is the red color on top, you see some difference in the wave pattern or not? So if you compare the waveform between the green one, the original, and the red one on top, look at the difference in the shape. The green one has all the little spikes and little sharp things, but the red one is just flat hops. Don't have a lot of the high frequency. So if you check, go back and check at the frequency domain, you will see that there's a shelf. Uh, one whole part of high frequency just got lost. So that is how uh, data sounds like when it's sampled, a certain bit rate and certain sampling frequency. So make sure if you ever do anything music related, go for the high quality. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.